I was born into a wealthy and prominent family in Tyrone, Ireland. I was the younger of two daughters, and we were the only children. My sister, six years older than me, and I didn't spend much time together in our childhood. When I was just twelve years old, she got married. I still vividly remember the day of her wedding. Many people attended the joyous occasion, all laughing, singing, and celebrating. However, amidst the festivities, I felt a sense of sadness as my sister left with her new husband, Mr. Karu. She had always been kind to me, even more so than my own mother. I couldn't hold back my tears as she departed for her new home in Dublin. My relationship with my parents was not as affectionate. They desired sons and showed little interest in me. About a year after my sister's marriage, we received a letter from Mr. Karu. It conveyed the news that my sister was unwell and wished to return to Tyrone to stay with us. Despite the sadness of her illness, I was overjoyed at the thought of her visit. She's leaving Dublin on Sunday, my father informed me, and they're arriving here on Tuesday evening. Tuesday arrived, and it felt like an eternity. As I anxiously waited, the night grew darker, and soon it was midnight. Although exhausted, I couldn't sleep, listening intently for any sign of my sister and her husband. Suddenly, around one o'clock in the morning, I heard a distant sound. Excitedly, I rushed out of my bedroom, calling to my father. We opened the front door eagerly, expecting to greet them. However, to our bewilderment, there was nothing, no lights, no people. We waited, but the anticipated reunion never occurred. Perplexed and anxious, we went outside, only to find emptiness. The next day, a man arrived with somber news. My sister had passed away on that very Sunday night. She had fallen seriously ill, and as we stood outside, waiting for her, she took her last breath. That night haunted me for years, casting a shadow of sadness over my life. In the following years, I lived in melancholy. Mr. Karu, my sister's husband, quickly remarried and I couldn't help but feel resentment that he had moved on so swiftly. As the sole child of a wealthy family, suitors began to visit our home when I was barely fourteen. Despite their interest, Mun captured my heart, and I felt I was too young for marriage. At the age of sixteen, my mother took me to Dublin, hoping to find a wealthier and more interesting match. Surprisingly, life in Dublin brought a positive change. I engaged with friendly people, danced every evening, and felt a sense of joy. However, my mother was not content. She sought a swift marriage. One night, she entered my room and mentioned Lord Glenfallon. He was from a prosperous family and expressed a desire to marry me. 
unenthusiastically, I agreed to the proposal. Soon, we were wed, and our journey together began. Within days, we bid farewell to my family and arrived at Lord Glenfillan's impressive estate in Creela. The house, surrounded by a river, trees, and flowers, appeared idyllic. Birds sang in the trees, and the sky was a brilliant blue. As we stood there, taking in the scenery, I felt an overwhelming sense of happiness. However, little did I know that the tranquil facade masked the dark secret. Entering the house, we were greeted by Martha, an elderly woman who managed the household. Despite my initial excitement, a chilling incident unfolded when we approached a particular room. Upon opening the door, I recoiled in fear at the sight of a large, black object. It resembled an old coat, but without a person inside. I was shaken, but chose to keep my knees to myself. Disturbing events continued to unfold. A blind woman, claiming to be Lady Glenfallon, confronted me in my room, insisting that I leave. The revelation of Lord Glenfillan's mysterious past came to light. The blind woman, his previous wife, had died under suspicious circumstances, and her ghost seemed to linger in the shadows. As the truth unfolded, I confronted Lord Glenfallon, but he evaded my questions. Fearful of the unsettling events, he suggested leaving for another country. Despite my confusion and apprehension, I agreed to go with him. However, the unsettling atmosphere persisted and I couldn't shake off the feeling that something ominous loomed over Krilla. A climax came when I encountered the blind woman again in my room. She revealed herself as Lord Glenfillan's deceased wife and threatened my life. Fearing for my safety, I decided to leave Krilla immediately. Returning to Tyrone, I found solace in the familiar surroundings of my childhood home. The once quiet house became a refuge, and I could finally live without the specter of the blind woman haunting me. Despite the challenges and traumas I faced, I rediscovered happiness in the warmth of my family. My experiences taught me the value of a peaceful and loving home, far removed from the dark secrets that had plagued Carilla.